Right now we're uh, at uh, Ole Miss and we're standing here in front of the Eagle Ray AUV. And uh, Max, tell us a little bit about this unit and the partnership that's involved with putting everything together because it's a it's quite a task and, and there's a lot of people involved. All right. Well, this team is called NIUST, the National Institute for Undersea Science and Technology, and that's a partnership between the universities of Mississippi and Southern Mississippi. That's right, the EcoGig Consortium is run here at the University of Mississippi, but it involves scientists all over the country to, uh, in order to combine their skills to uh, work together on this project. Behind me right now is the Eagle Ray AUV, or Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. And this is a research submersible that follows a pre-programmed course, uh, that is, it operates without uh, immediate user intervention and it's designed for seafloor mapping. The Eagle Ray is an electric vehicle, both of our vehicles are, and they run on lithium ion battery packs. So uh, roughly half of the, uh, the area of the pressure housing is filled with uh, lithium ion battery cells. During its mission, the uh, vehicle must navigate itself. It must know where, where it is in the water, and it's also acquiring scientific data and we're also tracking the vehicle actively. We're sending pings down to the vehicle and responding them just so we have a good idea of where the vehicle is. Inside the nose section, we have a number of our scientific payloads and all sorts of cabling and ropes to keep everything together. Uh, up forward is our uh, sub-bottom profiler. It sends acoustic energy down into the seafloor and uh, looks at the reflections coming back. And from that, we're able to look down and just look at the geological layers that are uh, down beneath the seafloor. This material called syntactic foam, yeah, it's really just a uh, flotation that we use in the vehicle. Uh, it's much harder than, uh, than what you traditionally think of as foam, yet it's still, uh, it still floats. The reason for the, uh, for the uh, structure there is that it must withstand the pressures down to 2,000 meters. If the system shut down entirely, we would want it to float up to the top. And uh, as for further safety, we have a 40 pound lead weight in the back. And so if all else fails, we drop the weight and come up to the surface. There's actually two computers that run the top side setup. There's one that we call the um, SSC for um, surface control computer. We go through an extensive pre-dive checklist before we launch the vehicle. This checklist typically takes us three hours or so to, to complete. And then part of it is done with somebody on the deck actually going through checks on the vehicle itself and then interacting with uh, somebody in here. So for example, we you know, test the thruster. So somebody on uh, inside here with a radio, okay, start the thruster, run 100 RPMs, got on the deck saying, yeah, it looks good. Test, of course, all the planes, you know, everything that you could possibly you know, look at on this vehicle is accessible right here. Putting a million and a half dollar uh, piece of equipment into the ocean, sending it to the bottom of the ocean, and we want to get it back. I was told when I started this that there's uh, a simple formula for success in this kind of work. It's number of recoveries equal number of launches. As long as you keep that equation to balance, you're, you're doing okay. Yeah, navigation is, is probably the biggest challenge for, uh, you know, seafloor, seafloor mapping. The main reason is that GPS doesn't work in the ocean. The radio waves that GPS is based on do not penetrate, you know, into the seawater. Um, then once we get to the seafloor, we use a different system that's called uh, DVL for Doppler Velocity Log. As soon as the vehicle dives on the water, we're no longer able to use all of our breakthroughs and in, uh, in electrical communications. And we have to rely on this transducer right here. And that connects to our um, tracking system and our communication system. Uh, that allows the vehicle to send signals through the water column, audible acoustic signals that we use for communication and tracking with the vehicle. And that's something we take for granted now in the world of, uh, of cell phones and satellite TV where you can beam an electrical signal all around the world uh, rapidly. Uh, by mapping with these vehicles, we're able to uh, get an accurate representation of what's going on down there on the seafloor and really make good mission decisions on uh, where these landers need to be placed 
in relation to the uh, faults and, uh, and natural oil seep sites that we can locate down there.